Hey friends, it's me Alyssa and I am back with Live in Local Atlanta. I'm here with my incredibly talented friend. She is a girl boss to a max. I'm talking actress. I'm talking producer. I'm talking author. I'm talking writer. I'm talking entrepreneur. I'm here with Jamie Andrews. Hi, how you doing Alyssa? So and how are you? There. <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so glad you are here on the show with me today. You are just such an incredible lady. You oh, are such a person to feature here in Atlanta. You're one of Atlanta's high and mighty, shining bright, you know, somebody everyone should know, just truly a lovely person. And I'm so glad you're here with me today. Just talk about some, some stuff going on in your life. Well, I think I have to preface it with saying moving to Atlanta really helped that all come about. I was kind of spinning my wheels in LA and I got here and I was so inspired. Like just the atmosphere here is electric and there's excitement and there's entrepreneurship. It feels like there are a lot of opportunities here that I've been really excited to delve into. So it started with my movie Division that uh, I was very inspired to write by the political climate uh, right before the election of 2020. So uh, it's a hot button issue thing. It's a little controversial, but it's uh, an actress connects with a fan online during the pandemic. And it seems like they've got something going and it's like fate, but it turns out they have opposing political views. And what I'm most proud of is that I've heard I'm very balanced in my portrayal of both sides. So I think it's a movie for everyone and can make people think. And it asks the question, you know, can we come together or are we too far apart? And once that was done, I went a little crazy and I had written this book 20 years ago that I was afraid to put out because it's very scandalous. It's called The Brink. It's available now, Amazon and everywhere. <laughs> And I was scared to put it out because I didn't want it to get in the way of my career because I got into some bad things as a kid. I mean, a lot of us do, but I kind of took it to an extreme. And once the movie was out, I felt like I had to do something. I'm like, I'm, I'm putting out this book. It's time. And I, I finally resolved myself to everything I went through in my past. And I feel like if it can help other people who are struggling, that would mean so much to me to know that there is a way out and you can turn your life around. I love that. And yeah, you hear that so many times people when they say, oh, you know, if somebody can learn from my story, if it can help them, if my story can change a life today or, or help somebody out of a pickle, then mm -hmm. let me say it, let me do it. And I love that because I don't know when and why this happened for us as humans where all of a sudden it was like, shh, we have to keep everything quiet. Like if it happens behind closed doors when no one's looking, no one needs to know about yes. it. Yes. But so it's, it's almost human nature to share, to help people be better. So it's like, why are we denying that side of our, our natural self, essentially? Yes, I think that's what makes our society sick, our secrets. Isn't that a phrase, like, you're only as sick as your secrets? You know, I've never heard of that, but Isn't that, that sounds, good? yeah, it sounds, like, tantalizing and juicy. And, like, <laughs> if it is a, a saying, I've never heard it, but if it's not, you should definitely coin that. Oh, I definitely didn't. <laughs> Use it for your next book. Use it for your okay. next book. <laughs> There is a next book. The thing is, I thought I was going to write my whole story, but I got to age 17 before I went to college briefly, and I'd already written like 300 pages. I'm like, well, I, I guess there's more than one book. So we'll see if people are interested in the first one before I finish up the <laughs> second one, though, because things got worse. They got worse before they got better. Wow. Wow. Y'all. I have to ask, when it comes to writing a book, you know, in my brain, especially when I was a kid, I mean, I still believe I can do anything I put my mind to, but yeah, you can. I just, I always wanted to write a book. It just is such an intimidating task. And you're just sitting here saying you wrote 300 pages. Can you walk us through the process sure. behind that? The hardest part is definitely starting. And I would write three, three to 30 pages at a time before I got to 300. Like I'd start it. It didn't feel right. I couldn't keep going. I was judging myself. That's the key to stop judging yourself and just let it rip. Don't worry about how it would be received. Don't worry about how it sounds. Just let it go and then you can come back and fix and rewrites and editing what you don't like or you could see how things fit together. But I think not editing yourself is the best advice I could give. Um, but this came out of me like an exorcism. Wow. It, it, it took like three months, lots of threes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that might be your number. Yeah, it's a good number. I'll take a bunch I'm of threes. I'm a third child. I'm the third of oh. three. So there you go. Threes. 
Three's picking happening. Picking up on that. Picking up on that. <laughs> fascinating. Fascinating stuff. We'll have to do like a numerology chart for you one day. <laughs> you should have my friend on. She's so good at all that stuff. She's in my movie division. She, it's so funny. I cast her as my friend before we were close friends. So I'm like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually came true. We became very close. Yeah. Um, but it was funny, like, here is a script where I tell you you're the best friend I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, you know, kind of when movies do parallel to reality. What, when you were working on Division, and you just mentioned, obviously, you wrote somebody in to be your friend, and in real life, now they're your friend. How do you pull kind of real life examples without making a movie so heavy and, and dragging people down or bringing people down? Well, I think the key is comedy. I love adding comedy. I find the darker a situation is, the more important it is to laugh about it. So I, I love dark humor. That's my favorite. And so I really hope, you know, my book will end the movie. It can make people squirm, but it also makes them laugh too. Um, there's, always, there's always a levity to be found in a situation no matter how bad it seems. Absolutely. And I definitely, to your point, I have always written about myself. And so I'm finally getting away from that. Now I have this new screenplay that's about someone else and I'm so excited. I didn't think I could write, cause you know, they say write what you know. Mm. I didn't think I could make up a story outside of myself because that's most of the stuff I've done. Mm. And, and now I'm branching out Mm, fascinating. I am a people watcher, so all mm. uh, all my stuff would be about other people. I would really be in there with the tea. Everybody knows me for having the inside scoop on everything. And they're like, how do you know this? And I'm just like, either I'm invisible, people think I'm a fly on the wall, have a trusting face. I know everybody's information. People so. love to open up to you? There's something about me. <laughs> no wonder you're doing this. Oh, That's why you're so good you. at it. Now, I want to highlight Division has won a couple of awards. You've mm -hmm. won awards for Division. Can we talk about that and how it made you feel? Oh, I like get chills just thinking about it because... I have the air conditioning on. That's why you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it could be that. <laughs> but I, I was really overwhelmed by winning those awards at the Lady Filmmakers Festival because you don't do it hoping to get awards. Um, you know, you hope people will see it, but to be validated like that, the second I walked into that festival, they're like, you're Jamie, you made Division, and we think it's so important. And to hear something you did be called important, it, I'm going to get, I'm verklempt now, Alyssa, oh, I'm verklempt. Oh, um, no. It meant, <laughs> It meant the world to me because oh, I took a risk doing it. I put it all on the line, and to hear that was really val validating. It was that festival was the best week of my life for sure. Well, don't say that. Today could be so the best far, week of your life. <laughs> so far, <laughs> we don't want to jinx it. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Now, you also do so many other wonderful things. You are truly a creative at heart, um, and I want to talk about some of those other things later, but how do you tap into the creative process? What do you do when the, the creative energy is kind of drained? What's your, your process with creativity? Well, I think rest is really important. My husband will tell you I love my rest, and I would probably be more prolific if I forced myself to sit down and write every day, but I really have to be struck by inspiration and you can't always count on that, but I have to have something burning in, in me waiting to come out. So I, I know uh, more seasoned writers will, they get up, they write for hours a day, no matter what. I, that's just that's just not me. You want to know their secret? What's the secret? They're actually robots because they don't get hand cramps. Robots. To be honest, that's See, that's what AI. I truly believe. <laughs> AI. I knew it. Yeah, I can't write for long periods of time either. I'm totally. I can't even write more than one sentence a day. I actually recently, uh, Cheryl Crow said in an interview for I think it was. Um, I'm totally blanking on the interview, but she basically said she recommends people write one sentence every day. Okay. And I've been committing myself to that. Yeah, that I and could do. I, I write it in my agenda because I can't even keep a diary. Like, I have tons of diaries that are half full at home, and I'm like, what a waste of money. So now, 
one sentence every day to sum up the day. I think that's great. It is. I and you have some kind of journal of what one of the reviews of the book said, like, this is clearly someone who journaled their entire experience. And I'm like, no, I didn't. And it's so, I would have remembered a lot more yeah. if I had that kind of reference. It's so great you're doing that. Now, you inspired me. I'm going to do that too. It was really Cheryl Crow. Okay. <laughs> you inspired me via Cheryl Crow. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I'm, I'm, making, I'm making lives today happen. This is incredible. <laughs> now, you are on this really great podcast. Can oh, we talk about your podcast? Yeah, we just started this last month. It's me and Daniel Baldwin. I was on a show called World's Dumbest. It was on True TV for several years. And they actually still play it, even though we stopped making it 10 years ago. And it's a bunch of comedians and uh, questionable, I don't want to say questionable celebrities. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> celebrities with kind of torrid pasts and, and comedians making jokes about like internet videos, like drunk guys falling down. Um, so I did that for five years and met Daniel. And Daniel actually moved here recently too. And he, we we're friends on Facebook and he's like looking for someone to co-host a podcast with me. And I'm like, Sure, life's weird. Let's make it even weirder. And he was like, yes, once I knew you wanted to do it, it was absolutely because we have really good rapport. We're actually both from Long Island in adjoining towns. We're basically neighbors. So we have a great parlance with each other. And, uh, you know, he's very eclectic. He, he has a lot of opinions. Uh, some of them I don't agree with, but I kind of feel like I'm the Robin to his Howard Stern. Mm. Um, so he talks about what he's passionate about and I'll rein him in and, and he does let me talk sometimes. We had viewer mail that someone said, let Jamie talk more. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Now, uh, did you two ever cross paths before everything with True TV since you guys were in neighboring towns or no. you only found out after? No, he's older than me, but I found out, uh, someone... I grew up with now lives on the block where he grew up. I have to tell him that on Friday. We do the show every week. It's on YouTube. You can look for the Daniel Baldwin show. Nice. And it, nice. It's, it's very entertaining. We have great guests every week. I love that. I love that. Now, your movie division is out on Tubi right now. Are there any other streaming platforms people can watch it on? Well, we had a distri... Don't you love how this happens? <laughs> we had a problem with our distributor. They're great, love them. It was someone they work with. Um, I'm not even sure it's on Tubi right now. It's definitely on iTunes or Apple movies. Um, but it's going to be coming back to Amazon and Tubi. They promised me very shortly. So you can keep an eye on the moviedivision.com and that'll have updates, but yeah, awesome to be like, I made this movie. Can I see it? Nope. Oh. No, you can't. Oh. No, it's it's also on like Voodoo. It's, oh, I do it's, like Voodoo too. Yeah, it's around. I, sh I should check before I say <laughs> that. I know it was on Voodoo. This this just <laughs> happened like a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. They're, they're scrambling to, to get it back on. I completely understand. Life can be a fickle thing. Isn't it fun? It can so just be. Just keeps you guessing. Yes, it can be. Yeah. Or sometimes you you can want to pick your eyebrows out and scratch all your hair off. <laughs> I know someone that. that I, I that. do that. Do you do that? <laughs> I do that. I do that with this eyebrow all the time. Oh my gosh, you can't tell. <laughs> Thank you. It just grew back. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, that's that's a very intense thing to to go through. It is. Now I want to let people kind of get to know you a little bit better. You're in Atlanta. Can you say some of your favorite Atlanta places to be? Okay. If I say that one first, people will question. I love Dad's Garage. I have a lot of friends over there doing great stuff. And I love Crog Street Market, particularly Susie's Bows. I, oh my gosh, I might go get a bow after I leave here now. Um, and the thing I didn't say first, even though it was my first instinct, was Claremont. Like the whole experience. The You're not the first person to bring up Claremont. Believe me. <laughs> it is an Atlanta staple. Yes. Anybody outside of Atlanta and Georgia may judge, but we don't judge. It's just a place. It's a place to be. It's got everything. Because um, there's also the rooftop. Yep. And then there's the restaurant. And then if the night gets really crazy... There's the Claremont Lounge, which I'll <laughs> let you look up for yourself if you're not aware. It's a great place. You're aware. You've been there. Come it, on. 
Yep. I see you. <laughs> I love it. Jamie, how can people stay in touch with you on social media, online? What can they expect next? You teased uh, okay. you know, some other stuff coming. Uh, well, my handles on Instagram and TikTok, I don't use TikTok that much, but, and Twitter are, are at J-M-E-N-D-R-E-W-S. So it's Jamie Andrew, Andrews. It seemed like a really good idea at the time. Uh, JamieAndrews.com, and my name is spelled J-A-I-M-E, which is why I left it out of the handle, because everyone gets it wrong. Mm. But you could just search me. I'm around. Well, yeah, I, I mentioned the screenplay I'm writing that's not about me. It's called Hardcore, and it's about a kid I went to high school with. It's his true crime story. I can't believe it's never been on Dateline or anything. Wow. It's a, It's this super intense story, and I'm really excited about the way it came out. And a lot of people that have read it are like, sell this, sell it. But I'd love to be a part of making it again. I loved making Division. Um, that that really gets me going. Uh, and I did start working on the second book in the Brink series. I never called it the Brink series before, but it would be called Further. And um, we'll see if people are interested in uh, reading that. And. I also have a graphic novel I've been working on um, called Cookie and the Monster. It's based on a play I wrote Aww. in 2015. And it won a couple of awards then, and everyone said, you have to do something with this. And I don't know. Like I said, I got to Atlanta, and I'm like everything I've always been like, you should do this, you should do this. I'm like, let's do it. I don't know if that's getting older, too. <laughs> it's like... I, I definitely, Time to make it happen. Yeah, I definitely understand that. I just, I totally feel that. And I think you and I are, we're actually like two peas in a pod. Kind of like, you did a graphic novel too? I always wanted to be like a comic book. Like, I always wanted to work for Archie's Comics. I oh swear. Oh my gosh. I swear that for me, that is still on my goals list. Maybe one day, one day down the line. Yes, <laughs> as, as an artist or a writer? Um, I, as artists, I went to art school and then I dropped out because I actually started, things started taking off here because I was doing this part time. I was managing our news and talk morning show and wow. I came over here. So I was like, eh, when I'm 65, I'll go to college for free. <laughs> oh, I love it. So I'll always be a lifelong learner. So thank you for that. <laughs> you probably already know Alyssa's the coolest. I'm just learning this now. No, me, no. No, no I'm a big, <laughs> no, you're I'm the a big coolest. fan. No, you're we're, the coolest. We're equally cool. I love this. I love this. I feel like we really are kindred spirits. Yeah, I yeah truly, it's amazing to meet you. It's it's really been such a fun and great conversation. I have to ask, you know, I don't, I don't want to hold you up. I know we've got to wrap it up soon, but... Is there anything else you want people to know? Anything going down? You have a secret in Atlanta you like to eat at? Anything like that? Any last thought, food for thought you want to throw out at us? Um, like my instinct is like, be good to each other. That's part of what I really like about it here. There's a kindness and a genuine aspect to the nature of people here. Um, and I love your station. I, I thought if I had to do this, I'm like, if they asked me to do a sign off, I'm going to be like, the electric and eclectic star 94. There we go. I love it. I'll save that. I will save that. I promise you. I'll I should put that say in it my... not like. Uh... You, want to, you want to do it one more time? <laughs> no. <it's... laughs> I love it, though. That was like, ooh, like I like that. It was fancy. Oh, really. cool, cool, yeah. I, I like that. Okay. I'm, I'm seriously going to save it. that. Steal it, steal it, I'm going to save it in my files. Don't okay. worry. I'm going to put your name on it so I have it for like a drop. I got that. Okay, it's, cool. It's in my files. It's in my files. I promise. But thank you so much for joining me, Jamie. This has been such a pleasure talking with you. It's been so fun. I know you've got amazing projects coming up in the future, so hopefully you'll come back soon and we can I do a little catch-up or teaser on what's coming out. Of course, this is Live in Local Atlanta. I am Alyssa, and don't forget to download the free Odyssey app today. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y inside the App Store. Once it's downloaded, favorite Star 94 Atlanta so you can get notified of exclusive conversations just like this one with my amazing friend Jamie. This Do woman it. does it all. She's an entrepreneur, a writer, producer, actress, all of it. All of it. She's juggling right now. <laughs> can you see the balls? Because I can. <laughs> but of course, if you want to stay up to date with me, give me a follow at it's me underscore Lissa D. I'll see you guys next time.